On the other side? You mean wealth in Acheron? Even after that uh chilling tragedy, this dream is still running effortlessly. Wait, wait. Even after that chilling tragedy, this dream... Yeah. Yeah, okay. Other than the family of the Harmony, it's hard to imagine any other power in the universe that could sustain a building of such magnitude. Yeah. The family itself is a huge, perfect building. Like a living idol. Mm -hmm. Each member of the family sees themselves as a piece of the divine puzzle, revolving around a singular core and a shared ideal. Yes. Under their command, they loyally fulfill their roles, offering themselves while also receiving sustenance in return. So a singular core. The neon, right? The neon of Omni. And then shared ideal, Omni. Under their command, Sunday said under their gaze. Okay, so there. Okay. They loyally fulfill their roles, offering themselves while also receiving assistance in return. Interesting analogy. Perhaps that's why Pinnacone's beautiful dream has persisted for so long. But the human body has its limits, and so does the divines. That doesn't sound like the kind of comment a galaxy ranger would make. Just pointing out the facts. Mr. Yang will definitely have a better sense of what's going on tonight. Why do you say that, Miss Acheron? The beautiful dream is crumbling. But not because of a particular eon, a particular faction, or a particular visitor. Its collapse stems from a certain inevitability of human nature. The family refuses to acknowledge this, and it has ultimately backfired and become a catalyst. Wait, wait. The, mem the memory zone mean that we thought where, while we were in the true dream, in the true dream state, right? The Firefly and Black Swan was named something unto death. Death for the capsule D, right? So its collapse stems from a certain inevitability of human nature. So aging? Death? Is that this this certain inevitability? And the family refuses to acknowledge that death is a possibility, aging is a possibility, and has ultimately backfired and become a catalyst. As people immerse their souls in the dreamscape, where consequences and pain cease to exist, mm -hmm. and only ease and pleasure prevail, they draw closer and closer to necrosis. Necrosis. Regardless of the perceived bliss, death looms. As the inevitable conclusion. Yeah. So death, as also I Also, this yeah. necrosis will diffuse and spread. One piece of the puzzle's mutation will eventually cause the entire building to shake, break, and crumble. Shake, break, and crumble. Spot on voice acting as always. In the end, the dreams that people built in the name of freedom became the cage that imprisoned them. In the end, the dreams that people built in the name of freedom became the change that imprisoned them. I see. I'm sure you've gained a lot from this trip, Miss Acheron. Are you willing to share your findings with me? Of course. That's if I remember. If you can remember, yeah. She says this as her hand gently rests on the hilt of the sword. And then, quickly let's go, in the blink of an eye. <sighs> Don't mind me, it's just a habit. Owing to events in the past, I've become easily... forgetful. It's only when this sword is unsheathed that those hazy memories start to become clearer. Oh, so when she's on the attacking mode then. Take your time. That should do it. I vividly remember everything that occurred on Panacone. Ask away. Um, regarding the moment of daybreak. The moment of daybreak. 
I've heard that's where the Dawn Factory, which processes the foundation of the Dreamscape, is located. Dawn Factory, foundation of the Dreamscape, located, all right? Behind the Dreamscape's song and dance stand many imagination factories. Workers create all kinds of whimsical works day in and day out in their dreams. Then they return to reality and sleep on a narrow bed in a room. A far cry from luxury. I mean, that's virtuous. That's troll being... Well... Uh, <laughs> being worked out to the bow. They say it will suffice. Experiencing the bizarre and motley dreamscape is the best reward. There I encountered a young woman who had just come of age. The perfect time to indulge in beautiful dreams. Her greatest wish was to one day move to the golden hour and see the magnificent garments she had woven with her own hands. For certain reasons, her wish was difficult to fulfill. But I managed to bring her a garment. Hmm. Regarding the gilded hour. Gilded hour. It's said to be Penacone's currency center. Yeah. Yes. It is a fortress-like financial city, the economic heart of the dreamscape. The Papeshi people of the Alfalfa family are there to keep it running, sending blood that is made from money everywhere on Penacone. Hmm. Everyone there is exquisitely dressed and always in a hurry. The greatest wish of the local Papeshi people is for their future generations to work in the Gilded Hour. I see. I've never met anyone who was willing to talk. I could only stand at the crossroads, watching crowds of people hurrying like the wind through the jungle of steel, only to deposit the alfalfa credits that they've earned into the bank's vault. That sounds, uh... Like what they will, uh, they would all do. I don't know if they would open the vault door, but before I left, I witnessed a well-dressed Papeshi person plummet from the sky, while those around him continued on their way, unfazed. All right, so okay. So any inconvenience or anything that disturbs the the day-to-day -day life of the Pesci people when it comes to financial and financial things and alfalfa credits in their vault accounts or banks. Yeah. That's crazy. Uh, about the blue hour. I hear the blue hour is very romantic. Do you have any tales to share? Perhaps Mr. Yang has heard. There is a large boat called the Aventide, anchored Aventide. along the Sea of Dreams, where soft music and dancing persist endlessly every night. It's a large boat called Aventide. I ran into a wizened lady there. She was at the dock, waiting for her long-departed lover to return, waiting for countless hours within time that stood still. In the humid sea breeze, she spoke of her own youth, like many who desired wealth and love, they came to Panacone to pursue their dreams. Alas, her lover's consciousness was lost in the dark depths of the Sea of Dreams. Okay, I understand. So, her lover was lost, lost to sea. Uh, and drowned, possibly? Like Finally, this. she suggested we continue our conversation on a boat in the shallows. I agreed and boarded the boat with her. But she never said anything. Her eyes absent-mindedly gazing at the horizon for what seemed like forever. Hmm. Finally, we retreated to the beach. About the moment of dust. The dreamscape of chic, luxury, and consumerism. The moment of dusk. My companions have been there too. Then you all must have seen those who are attempting to realize their dreams. Or have realized them. Scattering money as if it were dust and betting it on all or nothing. All or nothing. Everything has a price. And everything can be bought or sold. Even dreams themselves. Yep. That's true. 
A giant dimensional of a uh, all or nothing. No. This is a uh, Aventrine's uh, motto. <laughs> yeah. I saw an Intellitron there. Who was preparing to auction himself. Auction himself? When someone wins a bid under stipulated periods and rules, he would do the buyer's every bidding, becoming that person's very possession. That's crazy. That Intellitron had been auctioned off a dozen times, and I participated in his 13th. That was the grandest banquet I had ever attended. But never again did anyone cast another glance at him. This time around, there were no successful bids for him. Hmm. That's everything. This is what I've seen and heard along the way. Someone once said to me, Kanakoni wasn't like this a long time ago. Nor should it be. Hmm. I've traveled through the reality and dreamscape of the planet of festivities. Watch the tides of night rise and fall when time stopped for people. Where the spirits of the rich and impoverished remain forever fixed on their own scales. Hmm. This is why I think the collapse of the beautiful dream is inevitable. I mean, that's the, the reality of things. There might be a way to change everything. How so? Well, perhaps. But if this is indeed the world that people desire, if this is precisely why life chooses to slumber, should we still seek to change it? Okay, so yet again, another red text, and the Atron is in the picture, so. No. But this, if this is indeed the world that people desire, if this is precisely why life chooses to slumber. Should the thing still seek to change it? Uh, very good question. Miss Acheron, now it's my turn to share a story with you. Okay. There was a man from my homeland who, at a time when the world was grappling with deep, unhealable pain made a choice. I like how the music changed here when it was time to hear Welt's story. This, this music here, this score here, and the voice behind it, this hides a, a sadness. Maybe a longing? I don't know. Anyways, uh, so there was a man from his homeland who, at the time, when the world was grappling with deep and killable pain, made a choice. He wove together the dreams of everyone in the world, linking people's dreamscapes, and shouldered this burden himself. From this, he created a giant, a spiritual Adam. Giant, spiritual Adam. So he tried to, to, to shoulder the dreams of everyone and he links people's dreamscapes together and since that moment the giant stood between heaven and earth becoming the pillar of the world's existence as a price those who found it hard to move forward who could not advance forever lost their future they slumbered in a dream, devoid of disaster and pain, living out their days peacefully in the man's created utopia. And it is because of the wishes of those people who wished not to awaken 
that this spiritual atom became unbreakable. So, the wishes of the people were strong enough that, and also they wished not to be awakened. So, the spiritual Adam, or this spiritual Adam, remained unshaken and unbroken, or unbreakable. And yet, you stand here right now, which also means that man failed. Unless that man who failed, I mean, that man is Well Tiango Lon. Who knows? Because people must always move towards the future. Even if human weaknesses make them pause when they truly cannot move forward, humanity will eventually seek a way to save itself. That's such a powerful, powerful sentences here. Because people must always move towards the future, always keep moving forward, right? Uh, even if human witnesses made them pause, and they truly do not move forward, humanity will eventually seek a way to save itself. Because that's how humanity works. I mean, most of the time. And that man, he was never a failure. Like everyone in that world, he etched the possibilities of human nature into his heart. He was the sun chaser of legend, soaring towards the sky and embracing his final victory with his fall. I like how the how the camera panned, I mean, cut to this lamppost or yeah, lamplight. Uh, shining like that when he all he says at the same time the sun chase of legend Icarus soaring towards the sky and embracing his final victory with his fall he ascended to heights uncharted only to come face to face with the sun a place not visited by anyone before his wings would melt because of it only for him to fall into the sea and after that The piano. <laughs> Gee, the piano. <sighs> this piano is pulling is, is pulling my heartstrings. And the and the soothing melody. Wow. Countless others would surpass him. Soaring to even greater heights. Hmm. A fitting metaphor for the nameless's trailblazing spirit. Yeah, always soaring higher and higher. Seeking the chance to move forward and to reach further beyond. Shouldering all of the past burdens or past memories of the trailblazers or the nameless that trailblazed for us. Thank you, Mr. Yang. I know what you wish to confirm. The universe has innumerable similar yet different worlds. In these worlds there are innumerable people who look alike yet don't. Yep. I too have embarked on journeys encountering old friends with familiar faces on different worlds witnessing their destinies follow paths similar to mine so i will tell you even if not completely similar the story you just told it overlaps with my past and within that abyssal dream I ended that man's life alone. Wow. That's insane. <sighs> I am not who you think I am, nor will my home be as fortunate as your world. I am 
sorry. Yeah. It's fine. I don't mind, so long as I can alleviate your suspicions. There's something I still wish to know, Miss Acheron. Under that representation of the hunt, exactly what sort of power is it that has motivated your solitary journey thus far? Mr. Yang, before answering that question, I wish to continue the previous topic. I like your analogy very much. Indeed, birds are born to fly. But in a distant past, their ancestors could only gaze at the sky in envy. Yep. They saw that faraway ray of light from above the heavens, piercing through the clouds and blanketing the earth. And so, time and time again, generation after generation, the birds spread their wings and took to the sky, attempting to touch its ceiling. All because the sun was there. Reach for the sky. Then, what if the last bird finally soars into the sky, only to realize that the end of the light is not the sun, but darkness? All consuming black hole. Yeah, that could be it as well. Then why exactly do we even walk towards the light? Is it because we want to be a part, part of this looming darkness? Or is it because we we want to reach for that contemplation of having soared and walked towards that light? Interesting interesting transition between Welt and Hatron. But also we don't even yet know about Akron's true sort of power. <laughs> 